Hey guys, my name is Michael, and today we're discussing, unfortunately, about another cryptocurrency billionaire this time, who is deceased at age 41. At first, it was reported that he was of Polish descent, but the news got that one wrong. It was actually a Romanian citizen. He drowned in Croatia, Costa Rica, <laughs> and that's how the news gets it wrong. <laughs> Oh man, welcome to today's video. Not funny, this is definitely a serious topic, you know, it's unfortunate not everybody can swim or sometimes you kind of do, oh, that's a little loud, sometimes you do a little silly stuff when you're in the water. So you always got to be very careful. When I was in Mexico in Cancun, there was a riptide and I wanted to test it out, which maybe wasn't the smartest thing to do, but man, when it pulled me, that was kind of a scary moment for probably 30 seconds and then I was able to get out of it. There's ways to get out of that, but there's so many ways for people just to simply drown, even if they're good swimmers. And I was a lifeguard, so. Now, why did I tell that story? That's to just give you guys some insight into, hey, you know, you can't judge somebody. We don't know exactly the situation that happened, but we also don't really know who this individual is. He was sort of anonymous, to be quite honest. I've been in crypto for quite a few years, but I've never heard of him. Maybe I've seen some of his work, but his name wasn't tied to it. His name is Mircea Popescu and uh, unfortunately he died this week. He drowned off the coast of Costa Rica and now his family supposedly doesn't have access to his crypto holdings which could be worth as much as two billion dollars. That's quite a bit of crypto and, and I've thought about this many times. As we get older there's gonna be, you know, deaths. Not everybody has a will, not everybody's willing to share, not everybody's going to share their password, or sometimes it's unfortunate, you know, it just happens and nobody really plans for this stuff, and there we go, bam, you've got billions of dollars that are locked up in cryptocurrency, and the only way in is to brute force your way in, which could take thousands of years or maybe hundreds if you get a good computer. So we're not sure that money is probably as good as gone if it's not written down anywhere. If I was a family member, I would be searching everywhere, everywhere possible on the computer. On depends if the computer's encrypted, of course, then I'd try and brute force into that. Uh, phones, any notepads, any banks, anything, anything. But if you've got $2 billion, chances are good that he had some money somewhere right it wasn't all in crypto if you got two billion if you're a multi-billionaire in cryptocurrency i mean you know that's two billion and we're in a crypto crash right now so earlier this year maybe he had three four five billion supposedly he's a early bitcoin adopter so he died after taking a morning swim 8 30 a.m uh near playa hermosa hermosa beach in the Punta Arena province. And what we do know is that in 2012, he had a little bit of crypto drama. The actual stuff that he did related to cryptocurrency wasn't that scandalous, but he was known around media outlets and for his blogs and public posts that he was a racist, a sexist, a fascist, and you know, a bunch of other stuff. That's okay, he offended quite many people, but he was a billionaire. Billionaires are always gonna offend, unless they have a PR team like Bill Gates. And now, you know, the, the mud's coming out. Nobody's perfect, especially if you're a billionaire. Always gonna be some people who are going to write something bad against you, but uh, I'm going to assume that he was a good person. I'm going to assume that, like some of the news outlets are saying, he maybe got swept away by the waves because there were, there were huge waves over there. Just wanted to get his morning exercise in. Let me tell you, when I was in Cancun, I always went down to the beach every single day. I loved it, I loved swimming. I'm a big swimmer, but maybe a current took him away. Maybe a riptide, you know, see ya, goodbye. I mean, if there's huge waves, if there's there's too much pressure, even if you're the best swimmer in the world, you can't get out of it. And what's scary is there's actual spots on this planet that depending on the tides, get extremely unsafe. Just look up uh, professional diver horror stories. Usually it's with cave diving and all of that, which is next level stuff. Now what's interesting is John McAfee's death wasn't too far off and both of these guys, I'm sure, will be missed by their families and loved ones. They've changed crypto because in order to get to that level, you had to have some impact on cryptocurrency. And in the future, their hundreds of millions and billions might be worth even more. 10x, 20x, 100x. Who knows where Bitcoin will go. So to honor this man, let's go back inside, read some facts about him, go through him, and I wish all the best for the family. 
So Popescu, even though he was controversial, he was one of the earliest investors of Bitcoin and adopters of it. He started MPAX. It was a Bitcoin securities exchange in 2012. It was one of the early venues for Bitcoin IPOs. The SEC did an investigation on it in 2014, but it doesn't appear anything came out of that investigation. Some people dubbed him for being very crass, uh, the father of Bitcoin toxicity, but whatever, you're, as you get more successful, you're always going to get those haters. Uh, he wrote, Bitcoin is fate. It operates completely outside of any human agency. For all you know about Bitcoin's creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin might as well have created itself. Bitcoin can kill all your friends and all the people you respect. It can poop in your drink and... <laughs> Wait, what? Pets? If lightning strikes where you sit, whether you feel a warm, cozy sort of love or the most burning hatred imaginable is strictly irrelevant. Electricity stays. Okay, I'm going to have to most likely censor a few words there. I'm not sure what that... He's got some great pictures, though. Uh, in another one of his essays, he outlined the roles he believed women were suited for in society. Okay, we're not going to talk about that because we have to... Keep it very kid-friendly. Someone uh, wrote about him. He was a thoroughly unlikable person who taught me so much about Bitcoin. I think the thing that will stick with me is his insistence that noobs lurk for six months before saying anything. We'd have stronger communities if this was a tradition. And I was a big proponent of that for a very long time because six months is a long time in cryptocurrency uh, because you can learn so much within those first six months. Tim May and Mircea Popescu, both deceased, the latter just recently considered by some to be Bitcoin philosophers philosophers or visionaries who deserve respect. Who's Tim May? Tim May was an American technical, political writer, and electronic engineer and senior scientist at Intel. He retired from Intel in 1986 and died of natural causes at his home on December 13th, 2018. He's the original crypto anarchist who is displeased with cryptocurrency hype. Author of the Crypto Anarchist Manifesto. Some very interesting characters in cryptocurrency, and that's one of the most exciting things about it. It's the community aspect of this. He is rumored to be one of the largest in individual Bitcoin holders. He has claimed to hold 1 million coins, though more conservative estimates place his holdings in the tens of thousands. The news has since been affirmed by three different women with whom he was known to have had long-standing, um, gosh, there's so many things about master, you know, there's a master and then there's the ones underneath the master relationship. We have to keep this kid friendly. Mm, I like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> Very high energy. The SEC's investigation, well, his opinion on that, uh, he took no shortage of joy in openly undermining their power. Popescu would gain notoriety for being among the first to combat scams in public, emerging as a vocal critic of Ripple, as well as Bitcoin Savings and Trust, which was later revealed to have been a pyramid scheme. His blog, Trilemma.com, contains all of the above, an aggressive brand of unapologetic Bitcoin evangelism that made his influence despite documented instances of being blank, 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 anti-Semitism, being blank, 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 a bunch of others. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, indeed, there are those who believe Popescu should have no recognition at all in passing due to his long and demonstrated use of hateful language. For others, his influence on the Bitcoin conversation is and was undeniable. An avid antagonist of Bitcoin coders, he would do much to undermine early lead developer Gavin Anderson's claims to any link or lineage to Satoshi Nakamoto, referring to developers of the day collectively as the Power Rangers, in blog posts that sought to portray their attempts to enhance the code as ego-driven, misguided, and generally infantile. These self-styled developers are by and large a bunch of, can't say that word, children looking for sexy projects, and who knows, maybe if they geek out more, they might become, mm, can't say that word, and some fatty somewhere is throwing her bra at them. <laughs> I love his posts, they're great. Though it's hard to pinpoint exactly where in his sprawling anthology, it was common for him to post between 70 and 100 blog posts a month. Therein, he articulated some of the earliest and most impassioned arguments for why the description Bitcoin user must be confined solely to those who run nodes. Popescu 
use the metaphor of peasantry and, and aristocracy to make this distinction clear. People who don't run their nodes are peasants, and this is the reality. He put that in terms that everyone can understand. At times, he even successfully combined his unconventional, unconventional relationship lifestyle with his Bitcoin musings in posts that argued for the freedom and ecstasy that could come from submitting to the software's rules. Was Mercea a flawed character? Undoubtedly so. But in his worldview, only the software mattered. And at a time when Bitcoin was in its infancy, he emerged as one of its most spirited defenders. Satoshi Dice, a popular gaming website, gambling website, that only accepted Bitcoin, was listed on the Romanian-based MPAX by Eric Voorhees. Eventually, the listing became a part of the SEC investigation after the offering was not approved by the regulator. Voorhees was later fined and forced to buy back the shares that were listed. And during the situation, Popescu was famed for trolling the SEC, going so far as to post his correspondence with the enforcement team in his blog posts. His eccentricities was on full display as he set out to dismantle the SEC's requests and lay bare the holes in their arguments for information about impacts and client activities. Despite the little-known details about his personal and professional endeavors, Popescu's commitment to open-source systems is well-known. After the open-source operating system OpenBSD, which has been around since the 1990s, ran into funding issues, Popescu donated $20,000 in 2014 to keep the nonprofit foundation behind the software running. Given the security-centric approach of the operating system and Popescu's leanings, MPAX also employed the technology in its very own platform. Mired in controversy for years, Popescu left behind many quotes and sayings, some of which painted a fairly negative image of the man himself. I personally don't judge a man just based off of his thoughts, and in certain texts, I can say that, you know what, at least he didn't care. He was honest, and that he wasn't a Romanian, which is close to Poland, and what I've learned living abroad in Poland for four years, I just recently returned, is in Europe, especially Eastern Europe, they're going to be very brutally honest, and you're most likely going to get offended if you're American. You're going to get offended because of any comment that they make. They might say, hey, I hate your shoes. They look like blank. And you're going to be like, whoa, you're taken aback because you're so used to the fake American, oh, I love your shoes. We're together. It's like, really, nobody cares. But in Eastern Europe, they don't care. They're, they're going to be straight up front with you. And sometimes, yes, they're going to be very controversial opinions. But he wasn't thinking, oh, I wonder what the other guy thinks of me. I wonder what they uh, look up to me or what my response is, what emotions they're going to evoke. He doesn't care. He was being true to himself. Yet none of his antics were taken so seriously as his promise to dump a million Bitcoins in the market if changes were made to Bitcoin block sizes, earning him the moniker Father of Bitcoin Toxicity. This was in 2016. Eventually, Sedgwick 2X, an initiative designed to double the block size to 2MB, was abandoned and cemented in the network's use of one megabyte block sizes. Despite never being confirmed, it was inferred that Popescu actually did command control over that vast swath of a million Bitcoin, which if true, made him likely the only Bitcoin millionaire in terms of actually owning over 1 million coins. However, this, fogger, this figure was never confirmed, uh, but he was and is, well, was before in his, his untimely death, a billionaire from cryptocurrency. So... For now, the situation remains crowded in mystery amid the lack of formal confirmation of his passing. And just like John McAfee, you know, there's a lot of these weird situations. I'm going to leave the links down below. Pretty interesting figure. Pretty interesting figure. Probably would be cool to hang out and party with. I'm just saying. Although I couldn't really party, you know, too hard because of my tinnitus. But, uh, you know, just go out for a nice drink of Coca-Cola and, and just chat with him about his life views. That would be probably pretty cool. Thanks so much for watching today's video, guys. Pretty sad story. Hey, it is what it is. Life. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's horrible. But uh, thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow in tomorrow's video. Stay safe. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.